Hello, my name is Terry Baldwin, and today I have with me Donna Freisinger, who is a brand new author of a children's book and also a longtime family friend. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be talking about her brand new book, which is called Bink and Slinky's Ark Adventure. Hello, Donna. Good to have you with us here. Thank you, Terry. It's first, good to be here. <laughs> my first question is this Why a book about snails? <laughs> well, everybody asks that question. Um, snails are the smallest creature in the world, they're the slowest animal in the world, probably the seemingly most insignificant animal in the world. So when a friend one day said to me, you know, it took a lot of perseverance for the snails to reach the ark, I thought, wouldn't that make a wonderful story for children? Just, you know, because we all are so different, but yet we ha each have our own purpose in life. So and you probably had to do a lot of research on snails, didn't you? I did. <laughs> Lots of research on snails. For example, did you know that snails only have one foot? Yes, I, I did. And they're called belly-footed animals, which kids think is really funny when I tell them that. They, sec they secrete slime to, leave a to make it make a trail, actually, to get from one place to the other. So you're probably the only girl I know who is an expert on snails. Okay? I am. I let you do that. <laughs> well, first of all, let me ask you this. How is it you got started writing? Actually, how old were you when you got started writing? Okay, actually I started writing when I was a little girl. Um, and I guess I like to read. I was always at the library getting overdue fines on my library books, by the way. And because I like to read, I naturally started writing. And my teachers always read my stories out loud when I was growing up in school. I, uh, I was actually editor of my school, school paper then and I went to Butler University to major in journalism oh, originally. And, uh, that lasted for two years until Colonel Barron, who was the head of Butler University's journalism department, convinced me that girls should not be in journalism. Because, <laughs> Terry, I was the only girl in the journalism department. The rest was all guys. Because back when I went to school in 1966, girls were either going to be a nurse, a teacher, or a secretary. <laughs> so I was out of place. So anyway, I um, ended up getting my degree just to graduate in elementary education because I changed my major five times after that. But um, and ended up teaching for a while. But um, always, always liked to write, and it was always my favorite part of the school day when I could teach other kids creative writing, and uh, did that for, through a lot of years through the performing arts, even re rewriting songs or rewriting scripts or whatever. And before you go any further, have you sent that professor a copy of your book yet? You know, I need to do that, <laughs> I'll, I'll Colonel Barron. I need, I need to do that. That'd be great. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. So. Um, Anyway, about seven years ago, I had been, my husband, I've always been involved in the performing arts, which you all knew, know because you were involved in that with us for ever since we've known each other. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, it was like the Lord was nudging me seven years ago that um, I wanted to reach beyond Rochester with, with, the, with the talents that God has given me, which my, my passion in life is to share the good news of Jesus through the, through the arts. That's mm -hmm. always been my passion. And I've done that a lot, but like I said, I wanted to reach beyond Rochester to do that and um, just decided to make a change in my life, which was really hard because I've never, I'm not a quitter. I know you're not a quitter either. And so it's really hard to, mm -hmm. th th to really get to give up something, to take a step in a new direction. I, th I think of the Indiana Jones movie when they had to cross that bridge over the, over the, uh, the remember over the, the crevice or the canyon? Oh, yes. And they couldn't see the bridge until they took the step out and then all of a sudden the, the bridge appeared. And that's how I felt going into this new adventure in my life, that I just had to take that step of faith and to, be, to begin the, my new writing career. Well, I imagine the idea of not giving up, it really paid off because there's probably a lot of people who've tried to write books and tried to sell it, tried to sell it, and have given up quite a bit. Did it take you a long time to get this published? It took seven years, and so it doesn't happen overnight. As a matter of fact, before I, you and I met today, I met a lady up at um, Second Blessings here in Rochester, and she goes, oh, you're a children's author. I tried to write a children's book. Did you self-publish? I said, no, I did it the hard way. Mm -hmm. I didn't self-publish. A lot of people can do that nowadays, and that's fine. But, um, but I, I said from the get-go that God was going to be my publisher, and that if this was something from Him, that He was going to get the books published. So there are, it's very hard to get a book published. I, I began seven years ago, and uh, the biggest people I say I give, ask for advice. You mm -hmm. know, as soon as they, everybody's a writer. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's a hard. I imagine it's pretty hard to get into. So it I'm is. Always but asking the, advice. But the, I bet the best advice I got, which I ignored for a little while, because you always think you can get things the fast way, you know, mm -hmm. but without g going through the proper order. The first piece of advice I got is very true, though, is that that is that you should write for magazines first. Mm -hmm. 
because that gives you credibility. If you can write, be accepted by magazines, which is no easy thing either, but if you can be, get, get, get your credentials built up through writing th for magazines, then editors might actually take a look at you. So I guess that leads to my next question. What other publications have you written? When I first started, I, didn't, I knew I wanted to write, but I didn't know what they call this a genre. I didn't know what, what, what genre I wanted to write in. So I started, I wrote for guidepost books, I wrote for ideals um, magazines, a lot of people have those gift books on their coffee tables. I wrote for um, Today's Christian Woman, for um, Mature Living. <laughs> <laughs> I am in From those years. Yeah. Children's book. <laughs> exactly. But um, about seven years ago, I started really enjoying my little nephew and niece. I have a sister who's 21 years younger than me, and she had these twins that um, are just my heart throbs, and I was watch them play, and it just let my imagination soar and bring me back to my childhood and thinking, I would like to write for kids. Kids have there's so much garbage in their life nowadays, um, you know, from from so many different aspects of life, which. We don't have to get into all that, but they need a positive message in their life. They need they need positive reinforcement. They need to know that um, that they you know like you and I talk about all the time. So many people live their life, but they aren't living it on purpose. Mm -hmm. They're going someplace, but they're yeah. not getting there. Not going someplace on purpose. Very good. And so I you know, I I want to inspire kids to do that. So that's the reason why, I guess that was my next question, why children's why, books? That's why children's books. The next generation, I want, to, I, want to, I want to be of influence on the next generation. Well, let me ask you this. In writing these articles for Mature Living and for children's book, which is easier? Do you find one easier to write? The easiest thing for me to write is poetry, is which you'll notice that Bink and Slinky's Ark Adventure is all done in rhyme. It's always come natural to me. and. One thing they kept telling me over these last seven years is publishers don't want things in rhyme over and over and over again. You hear that, but that's because so many people do it bad <laughs> because everybody thinks that you know they can do it. And I, I'd always say, but I'm good at it. You know, like, I, I'm good at rhyme, and I am. And I think a lot of that even. Um, comes from my marching band background because I have a good sense of rhythm, mm -hmm. you know, and so I can get the meter right and I can make and I can make the rhyme work. Yes, you can. As a matter of fact, a lot of the words you use in here, just the many different ways to say goodbye, it just blew me away, all those, how you made them rhyme. That's, that's very, very good. I like that. Thank you. I enjoy doing that. Well, let me ask you this, and there are probably a lot of people who would like to publish a book out there. How does one go about getting a book published? Go to writer's conferences. Go to writers' conferences, and you know people might say, "Well, I work full time, or that's it's too expensive." But Terry, there are scholarships available for all these writers' conferences out there, and yes, it takes time to fill out the applications and to do it. But God has been so good to me in getting me scholarships to almost every conference I've been to. Oh, wow! So, so they're they're out there. A lot of people don't apply for them. So how would you find out about these scholarships? Did you get online? I or? got online. Okay. That's right. And then you just start looking at look, you start read, reading about different ones and you they'll and then they'll say financial help or scholarships available. So you click on that and it's a lot of rigmarole just like it is for all the college kids like you've had your two kids oh, yeah. go through high school and know all the things they got to fill out for their applications for scholarships and stuff. So it's a lot of hard work but it's well worth it. Did you find that in your search for these different things and scholarships that uh you, there was a lot to pitfalls. I mean, for instance, there's a lot of stuff out there say, hey, look at me, give me your money, I will get your book published, that kind of stuff. Oh, Did my you, gosh. Were there a lot of those? There's there? a lot of that, and there's more and more of it every day. Wow. You know, just, um, matter of fact, most people that you, that, I t that you talk to say, oh, I've written a book, too they'll find out they're self-published. Right. And of course there's people out there that want to take your money. And I've written, I've read some very poor self-published books because the editing wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've read some good ones too. Okay, uh, what are the, this particular book, uh, Bink and Slinky's Ark Adventure, what are the benefits for this, of this book for both parents and for the kids? Okay, a good picture book has to, has to appeal to both adults and kids because number one, you're going to be the one reading it to your little boy and girl every night right. over and over and over <laughs> and over again, right? Yes. So it has to be a book that you're going to enjoy reading, that they're going to enjoy listening to. So you, gotta, you have to make the words sing. You have to, you know, they make, make it fun for them. There's also the element I learned at a conference that really changed my life about three years ago called the, the page turn. 
you always want to leave the child wondering what's going to come next so oh. that they want to turn the page to see what, what, what's, what's, what's going to happen next. And so that's a real art, just figuring out where to put your page turns so they, so they want to keep reading, you know? And, uh, and of course, a parent wants a good takeaway value. There's so much fluff out there, Terry. Mm -hmm. And a lot of children's books are just fun, which is fine, but you can make them fun and meaningful at the same time. To, so they have a good takeaway message. For example, Bink and Slinky's Ark Adventure teaches children the importance of obedience. They had to do what God says to reach their goal. Teaches them perseverance, not giving up, doing their best. And in Bink and Slinky's adventure, adventure, whenever they got in trouble and were feeling scared, they sang. Mm -hmm. And they sang their little song to God, as time, you know, reassuring themselves that he was helping them along the way. So it has all kinds of wonderful principles that we can teach our kids today. Kind of like Aesop's fables. There's a reason behind the story. Exactly. It's not just fluff. There, there's a good takeaway, too. But not only that, but this particular story comes right out of the Bible, except for the fictional characters of, of Bink and uh -huh. Slinky. So. Yeah, it so. does, but it's a new take on the Bible. You know, there's all kinds of books out there about Noah's Ark, yeah. but this t this gives you a new take a new take on it. All right, well, good. Um, now, my next question is this: Where can people get a copy of your book? Okay, well, of course, you can get anything online nowadays. So you can get Bink and Slinky online from Standard Publishing. You can get it online from Barnes & Noble, from Amazon, which if you get it from Amazon, please write a review for me. <laughs> okay? How does that help? It helps because it boosts the rating on Amazon. Okay. If you look right now, if you look on, like, on, on Bink and Slinky's Art Adventure, it'll tell you, like, okay, I'm number 376,267 <laughs> on, the, on, their, on their list of children's books, okay? The more better reviews you get, then, then, then that boosts your rating on Amazon. So, and it, and so it, gets, it just gets it out there more on, on different sites and stuff. Matter of fact, I was really surprised. If you look up Bink and Slinky's Ark Adventure or Donna Freisinger, you'll find 10 to 12 pages over and over again of just information about me or the book. Oh, wow. So it's really cool. But, but ratings on Amazon really help. So they you can, can get online and find all these? Right. In Rochester, they can get it at Flirt. They can get it at um, Webb's Drugstore, at the Hallmark Store, at... Um, a trendy fox, sorry, Could, and yeah, and also at Salon 708 where I get my hair done. <laughs> <laughs> that was a free plug, by the yes, way. Yes, it was. <laughs> okay, well, now that you've written this, tell me what's next. Do you have other books in the wings? I do. Um, the the person that's helped help me get has helped me get this published. She is an author of over 65 children's books and gift books, mm -hmm. um, and so she has helped. They, 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 here's the thing with publishing. They tell you that you can't get a book published without an agent nowadays, but you can't get an agent until you're published. <laughs> so you have vicious this, circle it's this vicious circle, catch 22, whatever it is. So first of all, three years ago at a writer's conference, I was sitting next to somebody just like this. At the end of the conference, we were both exhausted and just happened to be sitting next to her, which I say kind of tongue in cheek because I know it was a God thing, okay? We start talking to each other and her name is Karen Moore. And so she asked if she could read some of my stuff. So I gave her a couple of my things to read. She read them and she looked at me. She said, Donna, these are so good. If I can't get you published, I'll find somebody that can. Oh, wow. So she is my unofficial agent because she had all kinds of connections in the publishing industry, especially in the Christian publishing industry. Uh -huh. She's written for um, children's books for Roma Downing, you know, the Touched by an Angel Lady and all that stuff. Oh, so, wow. she's, she, so she's pretty well known in the Christian children's um, book industry. So she, started, she, she showed my stuff to Standard Publishing and hence the book. She's also, I have probably a dozen other stories she has in her hands right now that she's going to be pre and is presenting to other publishers. And then um, I also want to do a, a sequel to Bink and Slinky's Ark Adventure, too. Oh, yeah. yeah, like, you know, you could go uh, Bink and Slinky's um, Pyramid Adventure, do the story of Joseph, Bink and Slinky's Jericho Adventure, Bink and Slinky's Manger Adventure. You could go the whole, you could do <laughs> these things through the whole Bible, you know. But she has other books that she's presenting to other um, publishing houses right now. And hopefully now, because I have my first book published and Standard Publishing was willing to take a risk on me, a brand new author. Mm -hmm. Which, that's amazing in itself because, Terry, the most expensive books to publish are children's books. Are they? Because of the colored pictures. Wow. 
Yeah. Speaking of colored pictures, when you get this book, I just want you to know, when you get this book, some of the pictures that you see in here are just absolutely colorful and beautiful. The art's in it. The artist, did you do the artwork for this book? I didn't. When I first started writing, I thought that I would have to do my own illustrating, and so I tried to. I mean, I can do cartoons. You, you know, you can do cartoons, too. I've seen some of yours. <laughs> but anyway, it's not, it's, not, it's not real a professional illustrator. So they don't want you to try and illustrate your own books unless you're a professional illustrator, which there are some writer illustrators. Mm -hmm. Okay, in my case, I'm not. I sent out 20 books. My first book, I tried and got 20 rejections back. <laughs> so the publishing house has artists on their staff. These kids that go to college and major in art. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and they want to pair you up with one of their artists. So this particular artist, which she did an amazing job. Her yes, name is did. Monica Gutierrez. She's from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Oh wow! And so I've never met her. I don't think she probably speaks English too well even because I've got a few correspondences uh, of email, you know, uh -huh. and it's very broken English, so I imagine she speaks Spanish, mm -hmm. you know. But um, also another miracle I was blessed with is that in the writers' conferences I've been to, they tell you that you can never um, have any say in the artwork. Once you sell your story to a publisher, it's out of your hands. It's out of my hands, which did not turn out to be true. Standard publishing let me have a big say in the artwork. Every single page, I got to have an art, I have a say in, which is wonderful because you know me, I always have, I have things on my mind yeah. just the way I picture them. And so they, they let me run with it. And the first pictures I got back last summer, Barry and I were on, on vacation. They emailed them to me and I just thought, I did, I cried. I said, Barry, these snails look like they just came out of a science book. They just, you know, nobody's going to love these snails. So I wrote back to them and, you know, with my, <laughs> unpassionate answer <laughs> to say <laughs> that these you know these snails have to be lovable they have to be huggable they have to be disney characters that kids are going to fall in love with and they are they're very they are yeah. very cute as a matter of fact uh, you have some right here i do this is bink and this is slinky a friend at church pam dalton made these for me and all the kids want these of course as soon as they see them <laughs> bink and slinky but um so they're but you, they're, can't, you can't buy these. These are yours. No, you they're mine. They're okay. mine. I, I, people keep saying I need to get some to sell, and I would maybe like to pursue getting little plush ones to sell if I can find somebody in China <laughs> to do that, <laughs> because that's where you'd have to have them made, oh, obviously, okay. to make it cost. You know, because it'd be so expensive to make them. Well, these look like a lot of work to them. They were, and she. I gave her a picture because I, they gave me the proofs ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So I gave Pam the picture of the snails and these look just like the pictures even the little baseball hat which her mom Gloria helped with because Pam couldn't get the hat just right so what are you what are you doing right now in Rochester in the surrounding areas what are you doing with your book and what are you doing with these snails I I understand that you travel and you you talk to kids and you give them the story and you just kind of give a little program you have a program with these guys right now I do for uh, um, I have a PowerPoint program a half hour program that I do with um, with school age kids and it so it, it talks about all the research that we you and I talked about the research on snails the mm -hmm. research on Noah's Ark which I found out some amazing fun things about Noah's Ark doing this book you know like what a cubit is a cubit Terry can I see your arm is the length from your elbow to the tip of your middle finger and that's how people used to measure. They didn't have rulers or yardsticks or they measured that was a cubit and Noah's Ark was 300 cubits by mm -hmm. 50 cubits wide which by the way is the exact same measurements that modern shipbuilders use. The, the proportion? The, the, the proportion, the same dimension, 6 to 1. Isn't that so, cool? So how many that number of cubits, how, what does that translate into feet? For that us? trace does, it's, it's into that book, that arc would have been as long as one whole football field plus the half of another one. That's how long the, bo the boat would have been, okay? Scientists say if it was 40 cubits high, there would have been three stories, which would have held 42,000 animals. Cool. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, very cool. I forgot your original question. What did well, you my, ask me? My question was this. What are you doing with these? Oh, are you okay. Around? I'm going around to schools and to preschools to read the story to them, to do this program, to, um, to let them know about my book. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, right before this interview here, you were reading to the Head Start here in Rochester, and exactly. so we're going to show a little bit of that. We're also going to put on you reading the story. Cool. Put your voice to it. We'll put in the pictures so you guys can follow along with the pictures and see what all happens. So you can, you actually get a free video book of this right now. So, but also, do you have a web page that they I can do. check things out on? Donna Freisinger.com and it's F R I Singer. 
dot F com. R I S I N G. Singer. Yes, singer. That's how Barry, my wonderful husband of 43 years, introduced himself the very first time we met at Butler University after the homecoming parade. He said it was Barry Freisinger. Speaking of Barry Freisinger. There's a Barry Freisinger dot com. I mean, Donna Freisinger dot com. <laughs> Donna Freisinger dot com is my web page. You dedicated this book to your husband. I you? did. <laughs> I did. That, I, I, and I, I, this was this was a surprise to him. And it just says, For my Barry, whose persistence captured my heart, till death do us part. Thanks for taking the journey with me. That was good. Well, thank you very, very much, Donna. Uh, and again, we're going to be showing you her reading the book uh, with the pictures and showing you actually interacting with the children at Head Start, and it's a great thing. So Thank we look you. forward to some more of your new books. Hopefully, well, we're in the library here at Rochester, Indiana. Hopefully, we'll find this book in one of the shelves as well. So. Oh, you'll find it here. Matter of fact, Terry, I want to just give a plug for Standard Publishing. They send a free book to every library in the Fulton County, in Steuben County, where I taught before this, in Lake County, where I grew up. Every, oh, every wow. library got a free book. Every, every school, every elementary school got a free book for their library. So any... Any school, any facility that had books that's associated with you in some way in your past, uh -huh. they give them a free book. That's, yeah. that's pretty clever. Yeah. It's pretty smart. It is, including Butler University, so they can share it with their elementary education te uh, kids that are studying for to be teachers. Well, so. thank you very much, Donna. Enjoyed sitting here. Going to enjoy hearing you read the book as well. And so, again, you can get online at DonnaFreisinger.com and get some information about it, or you can go to the surrounding stores that was mentioned and purchase your own. So thank you very much, Donna. Look thank forward you, to your Terry. new books. Thank God you. God bless you. What is this strange message two groovy snails found at the Garden of Chewies and Slime on the Ground? Dear Bink and Slinky, get out of this garden, leave before dark. The great falling is coming, go find Noah's Ark. Your shack's on your back, you will need nothing more. Slime up your sneakers, your feet may get sore. God. P.S. Get going. So Bink and Slinky each stuck a foot out to begin their journey without fear or doubt. So long, everybody. Arriva Dershi. Au revoir. Toodaloo. See you later. Farewell. Ta-ta. Hasta la vista. Sayonara. Adieu. Goodbye. Adios. Aloha. Bon voyage. Don't cry. Meanwhile, their parents packed them a lunch of leaf stems and flowers to Snicky Snack Crunch. But where is this ark, said Bink's mom and pop. Do you have a map? Do you know where to stop? Not yet, Bink answered. But when God calls, you go. They all gave a hug and waved. Cheerio! They squirmed and they wormed. Then Bink yelled, a river! They looked at each other, a quiver, a shiver. Oh no, said Slinky, what will we do? Don't know, said Bink, we need a canoe. Suddenly, a splashing of gurgles and swirls and two blinking eyeballs like emerald green pearls. Yoo-hoo! Mr. Crocodile, over here, sir. The water is deep, we need a chauffeur. We must get to the ark, may we hitch a ride? Sir Crocodile smiled. Yup, 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 inch aboard my backside. Then Bink and Slinky slid over his scales, singing the fearless song of two snails. We slide, we glide, we're grooving side by side. We don't know where we're going, but we know God will provide. In time, they slimed to a dry desert place. The blistering sand stopped their one-footed race. Oh no, said Slinky, we'll sizzle and bake. My house is too heavy, I have a backache. Don't worry, said Bink, we'll rest at daybreak. Just then, in moonlight, a snort and a wheeze, a humpy-backed animal spluttered and sneezed. Ah, 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 choo! Yuck! said the snails as they inched up a leg to sing to the camel who swaggered and swayed. We slide, we glide, we're grooving side by side. We don't know where we're going, but we know God will provide. Uh-oh, a jungle, the beat of a drum, a swallowing swamp filled with slithering scum. Oh my, cried Slinky, what will we do? Don't know, answered Bink. I'll leave that to you. Yoo-hoo! I'll help, said a chatterbox monkey. 
but I'm warning you, swinging through vines could get funky. They swished through the trees on a flying trapeze, squealing and praying, please God, help us, please. After many more days, they came to a mountain, a rumble like thunder, the gush of a fountain. In the darkness of shadows came a flapping of wings, swarring and swooping to eat snaily things. Yikes, screamed Slinky, scrunch into your shell. Hearts beating, they peeked out to see all was well. You can nestle in my wings, a bald eagle said. My quilt is quite soft, you'll like your new bed. And Bink and Slinky did. By now, alas, a whole year had passed. No sign of an ark, not even the mast. Maybe there's no such thing. We could die. Don't know, panted Bink, but we've got to try. But no one has heard of a thing called great falling. How do we know this is really God calling? Can't see it, can't touch it, can't smell it at all. How do we know what we know? We're so small. Then, just in the nick of two tiny snails' time, just when they started to run out of slime, who came eloping but Madame Giraffe? They inched up her neck, they squiggled and laughed, for there up ahead, glory be in the grass, was a big wooden boat. <sighs> They'd found it at last. At that moment, a plopping drop dripped to the ground. Plunk, 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 it plopped all around. Amid stomping, stampeding, grunt groaning, it fell. A man they called Noah jumped up with a yell. Pull up the plank, the great falling's begun. Get moving, get cracking, now shake a leg, run! Bink and Slinky double timed their song. We slide, we glide, we're grooving side by side. We don't know where we're going, but we know God will provide. The snails finally made it aboard Noah's Ark. They sailed monster waves in the crackling dark. It rained and it stormed, it howled and it roared. The waters rose higher and still the rain poured. When 40 days ended, the great falling stopped. Still more snail days later, the plank creaked and dropped. And when all God's creatures left the ark that day, they marched flew, loped, hopped, inched, and sang all the way. We slide, we glide, we're grooving side by side. We don't know where we're going, but we know God will provide. But now, what is this message that's dazzling the sky, sparkling in clouds with a rainbow up high? Dear Bink and Slinky, Bravo! Well done! Nice going! What fun! Through high places, dry places, creeping strange trails, your faith in my word saved the future of snails. God.